Hello friends, now I will be talking to you about respiratory failure, but before I discuss this topic, let me discuss some basic concept. In the basic concept normal PaO2 is between 95 to 102 millimeter of mercury and normal PaCO2 is 40 to 45 millimeter of mercury. So, in any condition if PaO2 is less than 60 millimeter of mercury, we call this as hypoxia or we also call as respiratory failure, right. So, now what are the types of respiratory failure? We have type 1 failure we have type 2 failure. PaO2 less than 60, less than 60 millimeter of mercury. PaCO2 normal or less, less than 40, but in type 2 it is more than 45. That means, the main difference in type 1 and type 2 is about PaCO2, but there is one more difference PaO2 minus PaO2. This gradient is increased and normal, the gradient is increased in type 1 and the gradient is normal in type 2. Now, what is this? Let us learn the basic concept. Here is the alveolus A, alveolus A. Partial pressure of oxygen is 100 millimeter of mercury. This is arteriole A and partial pressure is 95 a normal person. So, gradient is 100 minus 95 is 5 millimeter of mercury. This gradient is normal in type 2 and this gradient is much increase in type 1. Okay. Now, let us see what are the causes of type 1 respiratory failure. The causes of type 1 are ARDS, left heart failure, interstitial lung disease, pneumonias, bronchial asthma. They are some of the cause of type 1 failure. Causes of type 2 failure, chronic bronchitis, this is the most common cause. Then anesthesia drug overdose, where patient ka in anesthesia they paralyze all the body muscles and if dose is overdose, patient have no breathing, patient will go into type 2 failure. Third is neuromuscular disease, like myasthenia gravis or muscle disease like polio or guillain barre syndrome where the patient has motor paralysis or may affect diaphragm. So, any muscular disease 
where respiratory muscles are involved can lead to type 2 failure. In, in type 2 failure, cyanosis is usually there. Here cyanosis is not there or uncommon or it occurs in the late stages. Okay. Well, we have how to treat a case of type 1 failure and type 2 failure. Treatment first is you give oxygen therapy, whether it is type 1 or type 2. First is the give oxygen, of course, the best initial test will be always ABG then only we can decide uh, whether type 1, type 2. So, once you have done ABG, then you start treating. The first thing is oxygen to be given the first. In type 1 failure, you give high dose of oxygen 8 to 10 liters. In type 2, you give low dose oxygen 2 to 3 liters per minute. Here you give 8 to 10 liters. Why you give low flow oxygen in type 2? Because already CO2 is very high in type 2 failure. If you suddenly increase the oxygen flow into the lungs, large amount of CO2 will be produced and that will lead to CO2 narcosis. So, it is mandatory to give low flow oxygen in type 2. In type 1, there is no problem of hypercapnia. So, we can give high flow oxygen 8 to 10 liters per minute. And of course, you have to treat the basic cause in either type 1 or type 2. Now, we also have type 3 failure. Type 3 failure is so called is very common after surgery, post-operative lung atelectasis. So, we have given special name so called type 3 failure. So, as lung atelectasis occurred, you change the position again and again, you do physiotherapy to and of course, you have to give oxygen also. Then we have type 4 respiratory failure. We call type 4 respiratory failure because of any condition patient goes into shock. That means, his systolic BP is below 90 millimeter of mercury, systolic BP. So, as the patient has gone into shock, there will be reduced perfusion in the lung tissues. Okay. So, lung tissues are and chest muscle all are less perfused and that lead to so called uh, type 4 respiratory failure. So, anything which lead to shock is type 4 failure. Again in that condition, you have to treat the shock and of course, with oxygen also. So, this is all about respiratory failure. Thank you very much.